Welcome to Complex Analysis. This is the second session on the series on isolated singularities. Today our focus will be on poles. We will prove basic results about poles, especially how poles occur. It's in a very natural way, right? Okay, so let us get started. The starting point is what we did towards the end of the first session. Okay, do you remember that? If f is holomorphic, z equal to a is a 0 of order m, then we wrote f of z I can write as z minus a to the power m into g of z, g holomorphic and g of a is not equal to 0. Right? That is going to play, that same kind of trick is going to play an important role. Okay, let us get started. So, I'll quickly recall, let z equal to a an isolated singularity, okay, f is a function for us, some b dash of a r to c, it's a holomorphic, right, and we say this is a pole, if, what happens, is yes, if a limit z tends to a f of z, equal to infinity. What is the meaning of this? This meaning is for every m positive there exists a delta positive so that 0 less than mod z minus a less than delta should imply mod f z should be greater than m. This is the meaning of this standard. This is the definition. Right? So, what is the natural way from our calculus is the natural way of getting something like infinity as limits that go to a is something like this. That is, you have something non-zero thing, this is non-zero and divided by something which goes to zero. Right? So, if this is a non-zero thing. As the limit goes to z goes to a, this should go to zero, then we will get. This is the intuition. Right? So, this intuition is what we are going to do that. Okay? Let us prove that. Let z equal to a b a pole of f. Okay? Right. Then that means, okay, there exists a, a delta positive so that b a delta will be contained in the domain of f, which is an open set domain of f, of course. Okay. Union a plus or b dash of a is contained in the domain of f. Right? Okay. I am just trying to be extremely careful so you, you may get confused. This is the delta and this is a. Okay. f may be the domain uh, uh, from u minus singleton a to c possibly. That's why I am writing this. Okay. So, that mod fz should be greater than 1. Yes? Right. Now, therefore, let us look at this. Therefore, as a limit z tends to a of 1 by fz makes sense for, for z in b dash of a delta because 1 by fz is never 0. And remember on this f is holomorphic on this set. Okay? Because b dash a, b dash a delta, we can assume is contained in b dash a r which is contained in u etc. etc. And this is okay. My function f is an isolated singularity, perhaps on b dash of a or etc. Okay. Now th this goes to zero, right? Limit that a. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because one upon a fz goes to infinity, that means this goes to zero. That means given epsilon positive, okay. There exists. Okay, some other thing for mod z minus delta less than something delta dash. Okay, mod f of z will be greater than one by epsilon. Therefore, this will be less than epsilon. Therefore, limit z goes to a of mod one by fz is less than epsilon. Okay, that means limit goes to zero. All right. Now notice that if I define g of z equal to one upon f z for z in b dash of a delta, then g is holomorphic 
and g at a is 0 because the limit z goes to a of g of z is 0 therefore z equal to a is a removable singularity singularity of g right and with if I define g of a equal to 0 then g becomes then g is holomorphic on B A delta. Okay? Please understand all these things and G of A is 0 and therefore Z equal to A is a 0 of G in B A delta. Notice that this is okay. Now recall we define what is meant by order of 0. So, let us look at order of 0 of a at the for the function g. Okay. What does that mean? This means that g of a is 0 is equal to m if g of a is 0 equal to g dash of a up to g m minus 1 derivative of a and g m to derivative of a is not equal to 0. This is the same as saying when I write as a power series expansion okay, then c naught plus c 1 z minus a plus c m minus 1 z minus a to the power m minus 1 plus c m z minus a to the power m plus and these things are all 0 because these are nothing to do they are some essentially the derivative of g divided by some factorial yeah do you recall that okay therefore I can write g of z as z minus a to the power m into some h of z and h is holomorphic. Okay. This all we saw yesterday, but uh, I wanted to give say some of the beginners just like that would like to assume, but I would like to give a rigorous proof for that. Okay. Since g is holomorphic, I want to say h is holomorphic on B A delta. Okay this I did not explain very much in the last session let me do that first why h is holomorphic first note is that what is h of z h of z is summation c n z minus a to the power n where n is greater than or equal to m right so now g of z equal to z minus a into h of z right therefore g of z equal to z minus a to the power m sorry n minus m ok are you following into c n z minus a to the power n minus n first note is that this power series n greater than equal to m this is convergent because for z not equal to a ok this is a number this is a number ok and what we know is this is nothing other than c n z minus a to the power n n greater than equal to m ok and this this is holomorphic that means this series is convergent right now z minus a fix x fix z not equal to a so that is a number now z minus a is a number to the power m is a common thing therefore this into c n z minus a to the power n minus n ok this will be convergent why this is conversion? Let us recall again we are using infinite series. Suppose a n is conversion, okay, then c is a constant, then c times a n is also conversion. And the sum is equal to c times summation a n. Are you following? Yeah. Therefore, this is your thing, this is your a n. Then what I am taking as my c c I am taking as 1 upon z minus a to the power n for a not equal z not equal to a therefore divide by that that has to be conversion ok please pause review proceed so what I have shown is g of z for z not equal to a is z minus a to the power m into h of z where h of z is c n z minus a to the power n minus m where n is greater than equal to m 
okay and this is conversion and it's a if it's a conversion for a, which is it for all z in b dash a delta this is conversion and therefore this is a power series which is conversion here therefore it must be conversion at a also at z equal to a therefore h of a is cm and remember this is not equal to 0 because cm is nothing other than m to derivative of a that is not equal to 0 because z equal to a is order of 0 of order m therefore okay m to derivative of g at a cannot be 0 do you follow that so this is holomorphic please understand this I wanted to explain yesterday since uh, time was running out I didn't do that okay please go through it once it's very simple but you know like people like like algebraic manipulation they just like that want to assume okay we have a rigorous proof for that please understand okay so let's go back so my g of z was 1 upon fz but that is equal to z minus a to the power m into some h of z where h is holomorphic from b a delta to c right therefore what is f of z f of z equal to 1 upon g of z that is equal to yeah and notice that again notice that g of a h of so we can shrink delta if necessary so that h of z is not equal to 0 for z in b a delta this is possible because h is holomorphic and then continuous h of a is non zero therefore h of z will be non zero in a small neighborhood around a so if necessary shrink delta so you can get that yeah therefore what I have got 1 upon z therefore f of z is some 1 upon h z call it phi of z by z minus a to the power m where phi of z is 1 upon h of z please understand what you have shown now we said z equal to a is a pole of f therefore we said 1 upon f z as a limit z goes to a is 0 therefore if I define okay g of z equal to 1 upon f of z okay then z equal to a is a 0 say of order m for the function g the function g is holomorphic okay and suitably defined remember therefore uh, this is when I say this uh, g is has a removable singularity because g at a is not defined to start with because 1 upon f at a is not defined you understand f of a is not defined therefore but then what we find is limit z goes to a of g of z is 0 therefore g by our Riemann theorem it is a removable singularity right by definition it is a removable singularity by Riemann theorem it has to be holomorphic if I define g of a equal to 0 ok please understand these are the subtle points unless you go through again and again you will not feel comfortable everything will look mysterious ok using this what we saw that was I can write g of z as some z minus a to the power m into h of z h holomorphic ok on b of a delta and h of a is not equal to 0 therefore that allowed me I can write f of z as some function phi of z but z minus a to the power m ok so that phi from b a delta to c is holomorphic and phi at a is non zero ok so this is what you have proved so what you have proved is ok there exists a holomorphic function phi from some suitably small neighborhood of a 
such that phi of a is not equal to 0 and also there exists an m an integer natural number such so that this has to be 0 uh, right so th what is the result we have proved if f has a pole at z equal to a then there exists a holomorphic function phi and a na natural number m such so that f of z will, will be phi of z by z minus a to the power m with the phi of a not equal to 0 ok this please go through this whenever I want to deal with the pole when you want to deal with pole Okay, this is the important result. So the moment I say if you say z equal to a is a pole, okay, then I am going to say of uh, the function f, then I am going to say f of z will be of the form some g of z by z minus a to the power m where g is holomorphic in a disk around a and g of a is not equal to zero. I am just uh, uh, instead of phi I am using g. Okay, this is a very important result. Okay, and conversely, you g from B A delta to C is holomorphic, and g of A is not equal to zero, and m is a natural number. Then define the function f of z equal to g of z by z minus a to the power m for z not equal to a then f ok z equal to a is a pole of f this is again easy ok so any pole has to be of this form please understand this is very 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 crucial for whatever you want to say Okay, right. Now I want to claim this is unique. What do I mean by that? Suppose I write this as g of z, but z minus a to the power m equal to some h of z, z minus a to the power n. Then I want to say m equal to n and g equal to h around in some sort of disk around a, some on some b a delta. The delta is variable except it is an open disk around A. Okay, this is a claim. Therefore, this is a uniqueness. Okay. Suppose M is less than equal to N. Right. Now let us look at that. Then let us look at limit Z goes to A of F of Z Z minus A to the power n into f of z. Yeah. Now this is limit z goes to a of f z minus a to the power n minus m into z minus a to the power m. What is f of z? That is g of z by z minus a to the power m. Now remember g is holomorphic, therefore it is bounded and if n is strictly let us assume m is strictly less than n, then this is equal to 0. Yeah? Do you accept it? But then what does it mean? But remember, z minus a to the power n f of z is nothing as n z minus a to the power n h of z by z minus a to the power n therefore as a limit z goes to a this is going to be this we know is 0 that is what we proved that means h of a is 0 remember h is holomorphic therefore h is continuous this cancels therefore limit z tends a of h of a h of z will be h of a that is 0 but by our assumption h of a is not 0 please go through the argument yeah 
So m less than n cannot happen. Similarly, n less than m cannot happen. Therefore, n equal to m. Okay. Therefore, if n equal to m, let us do that. Therefore, f of z is g of z by z minus a to the power m equal to h of z by z minus a to the power m. Right? For z in b a b dash a delta. Alright? Therefore, if z is in b dash a delta, then z minus a is not equal to 0. Therefore, this implies for z not equal to a, g of z equal to h of z. Therefore, this is on b a b dash a delta. Right? Now, remember g and h are holomorphic on b a delta. They are holomorphic. g, h holomorphic on b a delta and they coincide on an open, non-empty open set. Therefore, by uniqueness theorem, theorem g equal to h on b a delta. Or you can also use continuity. Therefore, limit z tends to a of g of z must be equal to limit z tend to a of h of z, but this is equal to h of a because h is holomorphic and continuous. This is g of a, therefore g of a equal to h of a. Therefore, at every point in b a delta, g of z equal to h of z. Therefore, uniqueness follows. Okay. Okay, so in summary, what have we shown? F is a pole. Okay, F has a pole at z equal to a. Then there exists a natural number m and a unique. These are all unique and unique holomorphic function. G, okay, in some neighborhood B a delta, so that f of z is g of z by z minus a to the power m. This is all we have proved. Uniqueness is important. Okay. Right. Right. Now we, we look at because the, as I said, this is the basic result about holomorphic uh, poles of. Okay. About poles. Now how anything else will flow from that? There are equivalent characterization you will find in very many books. Okay. Uh, okay. All of them. Okay. If you know this, you can get it. So, let us what are the possibilities? Let us look at. So, the following are equivalent. I will be very sketchy. One z equal to oh, so I forgot to say this unique yam is called R of the pole. So, we will simply say z equal to a is okay, of mth order pole. Okay, we will call it mth order pole. If m is equal to 1, we will call it a simple pole. Because this m is unique, therefore there is no problem. We can simply say that, right? So, z equal to a is a pole of order m to there exists g holomorphic around a that is in a neighborhood some b a delta okay so that f of z is g of z by z minus a to the power m for the z in b dash a delta 
third okay limit z goes to 0 z goes to a of z minus a to the power m f of z is exists and is it is non zero and fourth there exists constants a and b so that <coughs> for all z in some b dash a delta we have a of mod z minus a to the power m sorry minus m is less than equal to f of z less than equal to b of mod z minus a to the power minus m all these things are easy we have shown already one and two are equivalent if that is a pole then we said that there exists a g such that f of z is gz by z minus a to the power m and this g and m are unique so we call m as the pole and if f of z is of this form g of z oh, there is such that one more thing i forgot g of a not equal to zero this is very important Okay. Now from two, so one implies two, we know, and two implies three, also is clear because remember these are all unique, right? These are all unique. Therefore, the li limit z goes to a of z minus eight, z minus eight to the power m into f of z will be multiply this. Therefore, it's going to be limit z goes to a of g of z, but since g is holomorphic, g of a it is equal to g of a but by hypothesis g of a is not equal to 0 therefore 3 follows did i go fast yeah and what is that limit z goes to a of z minus a to the power m f of z is okay assume 2 okay equal to limit z goes to a of z minus a to the power m into g of z by z minus a to the power m that is equal to limit z goes to a of g of z but that is g of a because g is holomorphic and hence continuous at a and by hypothesis 2 hypothesis of 2 g of a is non zero therefore 3 is proved okay And notice that three implies three implies two. Okay, I can prove cyclically, but this is much easier for me. Three implies two. What does it mean? So let us assume limit z goes to a of z minus a to the power m into f of z is some alpha not equal to zero. Okay, it exists right therefore define g of z equal to z minus a to the power m into f of z z not equal to a and equal to alpha if z equal to a then right therefore z equal to a is a removable singularity Remember, G is holomorphic on the punctured disk B dash A delta, and the limit Z to A of this exists. Okay, it's equal to alpha, which is G of A, right? Therefore, it's a removable singularity. Therefore, G is holomorphic on B A delta, right? Therefore, what is F of Z? F of Z is going to be G of Z by z minus a to the power m for z not equal to a so and g of a is not equal to 0 by hypothesis namely it's alpha therefore 3 implies 2 ok now you can see 2 implies 4 what does 2 mean 2 says f of z is of the form some g of z 
by z minus a to the power m g holomorphic on some b a delta and g of a is not equal to 0 and m is a natural number these are all okay right so let so I have b a delta okay this is my delta so if necessary make it delta by 2 or something okay the closed ball therefore let a equal to the minimum of mod g z okay where as z varies over closed ball b a delta by 2 and what should be b maximum right do you follow that therefore modulus f z is equal to modulus g z by mod z minus a to the power m okay for z not equal to a therefore mod z minus a to the power minus m equal to mod g z therefore that is greater than equal to a yeah sorry into two mod g z into z minus a to the power m therefore it is greater than equal to mod z minus a to the power minus m I do not do anything about this this is for the where z z is in closed ball closed are you following and that is less than equal to b times mod z minus a to the power minus m for the same z therefore 4 is proved. So, what remains to be shown? Now, I want to show 4 implies 1 or 2 or whatever you want. We have to say that. Okay. I will say 4 implies 1. That is very clear because let us look at what does it say? F of z modulus okay, greater than or equal to a into mod z minus a to the power minus m. Therefore, limit z goes to a of mod of z will be infinity because remember m is a natural number yeah therefore f is a z equal to a is a 4 yeah right now uh, still you have to be careful uh, let us look at what this happens f of z is less than equal to b into mod z minus a to the power m that means mod z minus a to the power m into f of z is less than equal to b right therefore if i define g of z equal to mod b sorry mod z minus a to the power m into f of z for z in some b dash of a delta okay then g is holomorphic on b dash of a delta and g is bounded this g is bounded on b dash a delta therefore Riemann's theorem on removable singularity g is holomorphic Yeah. Therefore, are you following? Yeah. Therefore, I can do. Therefore, my f of z is g of z by z minus a to the power m. Now, why g of a is not equal to zero? Remember, limit. This this one shows that has to be greater than or equal to a a is not zero notice that this shows a, a and b are of course positive numbers okay 
because we know that f of z z minus a to the power minus m is greater than equal to a for all z in b dash of a delta therefore limit z tends to a of z minus a to the power m sorry g of z okay is non zero therefore that is your g of a yeah please go through these arguments as you can see these are all very simple arguments in fact you just try to follow these are all very simple arguments as i said the crux of the matter is i am able to write f of z as g of z by z minus a to the power m with various conditions etc remember that's the crux from that by just tinkering around you will get all these equivalent conditions this is very very important please learn that well okay and uh, you go through it once more and close it and try to do on your own i am sure you will get stuck up again review that then you will understand you will see how easy it is as i said these are all too easy and hence they are very slippery right if it's too easy you think that you had understood completely but then you may not be able to recreate the proof okay this this when i was a student i also had that kind of problem okay now let's come to the last result of this thing now let's go back we said f of z equal to g of z but z minus a to the power m and g of a is not equal to 0 etc right z equal to a sub pole of f of order m etc okay now g is holomorphic right g is holomorphic on some ba delta therefore g of z i can write as a power series expansion let us write it as br z minus a to the power r r equal to 0 to infinity right this is for all z in b a delta yeah therefore f of z i can write as z minus a to the power minus m to g of z therefore it's equal to summation b r z minus a to the power r minus m where r is from 0 to infinity yeah now suppose i want to write it as remember when r is 0 then this is minus m therefore i can write as, in terms of n i want to write it as z minus a to the power n where n starts from minus m to infinity right then this will be b of n plus m yeah because this i want to be r minus m should be n therefore r equal to n plus m are you following yeah this is your object now remember what is b n plus one m this is the n plus m to coefficient of in the power series for g n plus m to coefficient but we have a formula for that okay so this is my ba delta so for any small okay oh let me write i hope i have not used r r less than delta okay look at this disk so this is my gamma gamma r equal to a plus r e power i t 0 less than equal to t less than equal to 2 pi if i do that then i know i have a formula this is 1 upon 2 pi i in double over this gamma let us simply write it gamma and g of w by w minus a to the power n plus m dw yeah but what is d dw that is 1 by 2 pi i in double over gamma this is f of w what is g of w go back g of w is f of w into z minus a to the power m therefore w minus a to the power m by w minus a to the, this is n plus 1 i'm sorry n plus 1 into w minus a to the power m they can cancel therefore i get 
1 by 2 pi i interval over gamma f of w by w minus a to the power n plus 1. Now remember this n is rather equal to minus m power all n this is true. Okay. Therefore, what do you think I have shown? I have shown that okay, if f has a pole of order m at z equal to a, then f of z equal to summation okay, sum a n into z minus a to the power n, where n is from minus m to infinity and my ans are 1 upon 2 pi i interval lower gamma f of w by w minus a to the power n plus 1. Remember this is the exactly like quotient interval formula for holomorphic functions right and this power series so I have a power series therefore there are two parts now I have minus m to minus 1 a n z minus a to the power n plus 0 to infinity a n z minus a to the power n. Okay. This is called Laurent series. And notice that there are finitely many therefore it is of the form something like minus m by z minus a to the power m plus plus a minus 1 by z minus a plus a naught plus a 1 z minus a plus a 2 by z okay z minus a whole squared etc. So, this part there are this is the one which is contributing the thing with what is a m a minus m is nothing other than b 0 that is nothing other than g of a and therefore, this is not 0. Okay. So, go through this. You so, finally, I even proved a Lorentz series expansion for a pole. Usually, a Lorentz series is introduced, then they derive, but you can see how easy it is. How did it follow? Again, it followed if z equal to a is a pole of order m, then f of z equal to g of z by z minus a to the power m, where g of a is non-zero, g is holomorphic around a, that is it. You see that, how it is important? All the results follow from that. Okay. Please enjoy, go through this and I went little fast because there are so many equivalent conditions which are very, very easy arguments. So, I did not want to waste much time by going very slow. By now, you should be adept please go through it, revise. As I said, the best way is uh, stop, pause the video, try to do on your own. If you do not get, again replay it, then learn it. You will see how easy the arguments are. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. We will meet again. Take care and stay safe.